Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. In Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our he was despised and rejected.
Please be seated. We are welcomed to the table tonight by Jesus, who often gathered with his disciples and friends to eat and to remember God's liberating power. We come tonight because Jesus invites us here. We are to be his guests, to listen, and to learn how to redirect our attention to places of suffering and work for what is life-giving. We are here to be nourished, not so much by the bread and wine, but by the presence of God in Christ. For the journey which lies ahead, which takes us from the garden to the interrogation rooms, to the hill and the cross. For it is here that we will find God at work, bringing light out of darkness and life out of death. So come, prepare your hearts, those of you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a more just world. In Luke's version of the story, the first words that Jesus speaks from the cross are these, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God knows we don't know what we're doing, even two millennia later. With all of our education and science and technology and information, we still manage to make a mess of our lives, of our relationships, and of our world. We don't know what we're doing. But on Good Friday, we face some truth about our lives. And so let us tell the truth together in a prayer of confession. Dear God, we love you so much that when Christ rises into our lives, we wave our arms in the air to shout for the sun, like, like the little children of the black sides. Yet, we pray Jesus. We ignore Jesus. We deny Jesus. We murder, crucify, crucify, in tones that are less than that, and less than that, and are in the witness of Jesus. But no less devastating with the result. Forgive us on this night. Have mercy upon us. mercy upon us.
We do not know what we are doing, but God does. God knows us fully, and yet God still loves us completely. And so the words of Christ from the cross still speak for us today. Father, forgive them. Good Friday is the only worship service when we give our offering in the middle of the communion service. We do so with gratitude and grace in our hearts for God's good gift of forgiveness. Let us make our offering. On the night that he was arrested and betrayed, Jesus was at table with his disciples. And at that table, he took bread and blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body which is broken for you. 
As often as you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of the universe, who brought forth life upon the earth. We give you thanks for these gifts of your bounty, for this wine and this bread. Come and bestow upon them and upon us your spirit, that we may have the courage to watch and wait with Jesus and his closest friends until Easter dawns. We give ourselves to this vigil as we join our voices in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. And forgive us our sins as we forgive our brothers. And lead us not into temptation. Come, for the table is ready.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. A cup of blessing, take and drink.
Tonight's service will end in darkness and in silence after the burial in the tomb. No pastor will dismiss you or rise to give a benediction. Rather, when the lights return in the sanctuary, we invite you to depart in peace. The story goes that after supper, they sang a hymn. And then the disciples followed Jesus to the Mount of Olives to a place of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he wanted them to stay awake and pray with him. But it's hard for us drowsy disciples to stay awake and pray with Jesus. Because although the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak.
Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you couldn't stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing. But the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, 
Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it and struck his slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it again in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered, You say so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You've now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him.
Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse. And he swore an oath, I do not know this man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Peter said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who was called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified.
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They had compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two thieves were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and then we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I'm God's son. The thieves who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way.
From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon and about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified. And they said, truly, this man was the son of God.
Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the others were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he's been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. 